Sonic the Hedgehog has a very large and very unique fan base. You've probably heard the old arguments that boil down to such incredible statements like, All 3D Sonic games are bad! Or the equally thrilling, Older Sonic games are stupid and boring. The fan base you see has been fractured for years. But how did this happen? Well, it goes a little something like this. Sega in the late 80s launched the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. To better establish the new console, and its abilities, they decide to create a brand new mascot that has a sharper edge. So we get Sonic the Hedgehog, a fast little spiny mammal with running shoes. The visuals were fast, the gameplay was tight, and it truly felt like an experience that wasn't simply trying to be a Mario clone. Sonic 1, 2, 3, Sonic & Knuckles all shared a similar game style. Start the stage at one side of the screen and run as fast as you can to the other. But eventually, Sega decided it was time to make a new platform. And so, they unveiled the Sega Saturn. This console would prove to be a massive hardware blunder. But I argue, it was what they did with Sonic that was the real mistake. Sonic didn't get a real sequel to any of the original games that people fell in love with. And this is where the fork in the road is born. Worldwide, Sega fans dropped off from the Genesis and skipped the Saturn completely. The vast majority of them would never return to a Sega console ever again. But Sega had one more console up its sleeve, the Dreamcast. And with it, Sonic Team finally introduced new Sonic games, featuring a completely different game design and full 3D graphics, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. While some people did play these games, the Dreamcast simply didn't sell very well. And unfortunately, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were victims of this failed console. Sega abandoned hardware development and these two games eventually got ported onto other platforms. And for the most part, those original Sonic fans didn't follow. They had moved on. But there was a new generation of gamers meeting Sonic for the first time through these ports. So you see, these two Sonic Adventure games and the other 3D games that were released after literally defined what a Sonic game was for this newer audience. Old fans were stuck liking 2D Sonic, and new fans wanted nothing but the 3D games. Sega understood the problem that had evolved and tried to fix it with the release of one single game. Sonic Generations. This is a game that merges 2D and 3D gameplay of both fan bases into one. What I really liked about this game was the effortless way it introduces both fan bases to one another. Each zone or level is broken up into two acts. Each act is played with a classic Sonic who is strictly in 2.5D, and modern Sonic who is in 3D. The real trick was blending the gameplay from the newer Sonic games in a style that the classic fans would enjoy. While Act 1 is classic gameplay, Act 2 uses the same level and designs and introduces the player to modern Sonic. Unlike 2D Sonic games, 3D constantly changes styles and directions. Sonic Team decided to take the gameplay from Sonic Colors and use that as the template for Sonic Generation's modern levels. The real sweet spot here is how well this works. Act 1 introduces the world in a fun simple way. Act 2 increases the complexity and introduces new gameplay mechanics that add to the experience. I'd argue the smart move here was using Sonic Colors mechanics as a basis. Colors felt like the best ideas of the 3D games all refined into one package. Modern Sonic fans in turn were treated to classic 2D style gameplay utilizing familiar levels and designs from the newer entries. So now that opening level was Sonic streetboarding down the twists and turns of a pack city, we get to see that done in Act 1 with 2D Sonic, complete with a short skateboard sequence as a nod to the original level, and in Act 2, revisited once again in a sort of remix style with modern Sonic, giving fans of that entry a new spin on an iconic level. Generations acts as an introduction to old and new fans to try out both kinds of Sonic gameplay, and it's something that no other franchise has ever really had to tackle before. But here it is, and it's done really well. Now personally, I think it has its issues, but it does a good job most of the time. And while it serves as a good taste between the styles, I don't think Generations perfectly nails either. This is the enigma of Sonic Generations. It is neither the best 3D Sonic game, nor is it the best 2D Sonic game, but it accomplished the unlikely by doing justice to both styles in one package. And for one moment, there was something for everyone. After Sonic Generations, Sonic Team would change Sonic gameplay up again and again, missing out on what made this entry so good. Sega repeated their old mistakes, splitting up the fanbase in two distinctly different camps. 
Eventually, when they tried a sequel to Generations with Sonic Forces, they created a game that played way, way worse. And that's what really makes Sonic Generations great. It's the perfectly adequate Sonic game that delivered an experience every segment of the fandom can enjoy. You get it, right? It's merging the generations together into one game. Sonic Generations. A little on the nose, but it works. And for accomplishing that one unbelievably impossible feat, I think most Sonic fans can call it one of the best ever.